Hey man, hip hop is getting crazy, dog. I told you, twenty twenty four is gonna be a crazy year for hip hop. Shout out to Fantastic Hip Hop. Y'all see the title? How Drake just got even more petty. Let's get into it. Now, after being the laughing stock of the rap world and things only getting worse and worse with each waning moment that the world has processed everything that went down in his beef with Kendrick Lamar, Drake has finally done something to stand in the face of Kendrick and his crew and stop their unprecedented victory lap. But when we really look at what Drake just did, despite. Man, this is so sassy, dog. It's like, bro, he keeps doing the subliminal shots. Like, even with the. They're probably sure, but the Instagram and the internet jokes, it's lame, bro. It's lame. You feel me? It's like you can tell he wasn't raised with a strong father figure. You feel me? He wasn't raised with balance. He doesn't know a foundation. He doesn't, bro. But there's no masculinity within him, man finally pulling something off to clap back at his opponents that actually kind of worked the measures he had to go to to finally hand team kendrick and l is honestly pathetic and if anybody else did this they would be getting a ton of backlash and what i am of course talking about is how kendrick's former tde label mate and longtime friend schoolboy q is currently on his blue lips weekends tour and as he was supposed to perform his show right within drake's home city of toronto it got cancelled by the Canadian police, and having to tell people that his sold out show was not going to happen, Q tweeted. They just cancelled my show in Toronto. Canadian police don't want nobody from TDE performing. And then he also went on to follow this up saying, Up was just with Wayne and Baby, SMH. Party Next Door had a show at the Palladium. If we wanted to get y'all, we would have just did. Now when somebody get hurt, don't cry. And that's crazy. And... And that's one of the things I keep talking about. It's like, why why are Young Money still not standing strong with Drake? You feel me? Even at the uh, all-white party, Lil Wayne said that Glorilla was the only person that came up to him. Drake is still petty about that, too. So it's like, bro, they're not really together. They probably just... I don't, I'm not sure if they still make money together or if they still have some type of deal, but... As far as loyalty, man, nah. You hanging with the dudes that made a PDF file anthem against me. Nah, that's not cool. You feel me? So it's like, bro, Drake's, he had to do something, dog. He had to do something behind the scenes. Now with these tweets, Schoolboy Q is telling us not just about what went down as his own tour performances had to get canceled. But he's also just reiterating the fact that if him and Top Dog Entertainment had any real issues with OVO and Drake affiliates beyond the microphone, it would have been settled already as the president of the label was just with Lil Wayne. And if they wanted to be petty and shut down one of Drake's OVO signees in Party Next Door from playing in their own city of LA, they could have done the same thing. And now that this has went down, Q seems to be declaring that this feud and these tensions are far from over, and I mean when we look at this move, with TDE no longer being able to do shows in Canada, this is something we can almost confirm. That and that's crazy, because it's like, I don't think Drake understands what's going to happen if this is actually true. Because like, I don't know if Drake actually did something about it, or if the police tried to catch it before something happens because of a supposed threat. But at the same time, either way, Drake is trying to take credit for it and try to play into it. So it's like, bro, nah, no, nah, I don't think he like this is what happens when you're not used to violence. You're not used to being from certain locations. You feel me? I'm Birmingham, Alabama. Like we I just saw a list that just came out this week. We we're ranked number three. Like most dangerous cities in America. And then we have been ranked number three almost every single year. Like I've been looking at the list. You feel me? He doesn't understand that when one thing happens, things have a ch chain reaction, bro. You can't just do certain things like this. This is really big, bro. This is crazy. This is something we can almost confirm that Drake had his hand in, because in the past, he had the pull to do such things as get Lil Wayne back into Toronto in 2022 after being banned all the way back in 2011, and seeing how big of a star Drake is and just how much of an ambassador he is for Canada between the festivals he throws and his involvement with the Toronto Raptors. 
It really should not be shocking that probably the biggest star the country has ever produced has so much pull over things if he wants. And if this wasn't enough for you, Drake posting later on his IG story in a Tony Yayo shirt after Yayo recently said that any critics of Drake would no longer be welcomed in the six, it pretty much confirms what the evidence and school's words are. Man, that's so lame, bro. That's so corny, bro. Drake's so lame, no. I bro. It's like, I bet. But he told us. But just because Drake is the face of Canada does not mean it's all right to do this because out of everything Drake could have done to level the score from releasing new music to trying other angles to diss Kendrick, TDE, and the West Coast through, this is not just one of the pettiest. But it's actually pathetic that these are the measures you have to go to to counteract the impact your opponents are making and when it comes to what this choice means. On top of how forcing a show to get cancelled right before it's about to happen makes everybody from the artist to the hardworking crews on the tour lose money, Drake is also literally robbing his own city and country from getting one of the best musical performances that was on their calendar this year because as Schoolboy Q has shown in 2024, aside from his affiliation with Kendrick Lamar and his appearances at the Pop Out concert and in the Not Like Us video, he has been one of the best rappers this entire year period as his album Blue Lips was genuinely amazing and with Q's breathtaking performances that pushed the boundaries of how you can infuse passionate lyricism, emotional pain, and unpredictable production, all with one factor that few rappers, including Drake, can never showcase, which is maturity. This project is a surefire album of the year candidate. Hey man, like he talking about like the entire TDE, that's Sizzle, goddamn uh, Absol, J-Rock, all, it's like bro, even then, Metro Boomin and Future about to come up. Ah, uh, in August. Oh, man, we about to see, dog. You feel me? Let's see what type of pool Drake got. We'll go down as one of the best bodies of work from this year, and unfortunately, Canada will never be able to see Schoolboy Q remind the world of why he is one of the best rappers of the 2010s and why he's only growing more now and with the rest of TDE and their affiliates. From Absol, J-Rock, if they are really serious about this, then SZA, and of course Kendrick Lamar. Mm. All of these names and more are banned from ever playing in Drake's home city, which is just a pathetic move, and at the end of the day, it's only gonna hurt the city in the long run as their hip-hop ecosystem will begin to get closed off from the larger hip-hop world, because with all of the other rappers who have problems with Drake, who knows how far he will end up going with this. I think what we'll really be telling about this is when Future and Metro Boomin go to Toronto on August 11th during their We Trust You tour. Because considering that these two were the guys who started this whole nightmare for Drake and that they have been some of the most calculated and firm when it comes to standing on their Because that's crazy because, hey, LA is LA too. Drake needs LA. Atlanta, like, bro, you can't, Drake, he can't be that stupid. He can't be that stupid. Please, Drake, do not be that stupid and try to do anything because now you have Atlanta on your ass. Then you got LA. Bro, no, don't do it. Miami, Rick Ross, bro, don't do it. Do not do it. Do not do it. Don't 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 do it. Oh, my God. Drake. Oh. That's how Drake stands. It very well seems like they could run into a similar problem and find out that they can't play the shows that they are supposed to. And from doing all this, I think the question we really have to look at is, what is Drake actually achieving by doing this? I mean, this is the equivalent of somebody taking their ball home because they don't want to play with everybody else anymore. And if Drake starts blocking off artists who are affiliated with Kendrick Lamar and people who just don't like him from coming into his city, Aside from Drake's own petty interest, which will keep his rivals away from his own turf and hurt their own pockets by having one less place to go, I guess. This will also hurt the businesses and venues that rely on some of these tours. Take for example the venue that was hosting Q's show, History. This was a sold out concert with a venue capacity of 2,500 people lined up to go and now. All the people going are not just going to get inconvenienced, but the businesses in your own city will lose money for having a show that is one of the biggest tours going on right now not coming through your city, and this is the problem. Now, despite the fact that this venue is partially owned by Drake, there are other stakeholders and people with jobs who are just being massively inconvenienced by this all, and what this really is showing is the fundamental difference between how Drake and a lot of the other artists in TDE just handle being big-time rappers. As Drake is being petty at the literal expense of everybody else, and when you can no longer compete with Kendrick or any of TDE lyrically or on any sort of chessboard musically, with this being the route Drake is going on, 
it's really just showing how desperate he is to try to get back at Kendrick and TDE for doing what seems like irreversible damage to his career, and now as this show has been cancelled and now with Schoolboy Q. After his initial social media rant and confirmation that if this is the way Team Drake wants to play, TDE won't be the aggressors, but they will take note. Q also made sure to make it clear that him and his crew would never take this beyond music, because at the end- Don't do it. Don't do it to yourself, bro. Don't do it, man. Come on. It ain't worth it. Like, that's, that's a huge mistake. Just let it go. Go to the background. Chill out for a little bit. Why won't he just chill out? Today, it does not matter to them. Now, whether this was when Kendrick was talking about raising his son and that his whole life is not about rap on a track like Euphoria, or Q making the point over and over again as social media was blowing up over this that he is a soccer dad. While these guys do put their heart into their art and release great songs and albums when they come out, at the end of the day, rap is a job to them, and especially now as guys like Kendrick and crew have families. They keep the rap game at arm's length from them so they can be the men and fathers that they want to be. So ridiculous antics that are under them don't follow them around everywhere they go, and at the end of the day, that is the difference with this whole situation. Drake is so petty and caught up on this feud that he is banning his competition from coming to his city regardless of who else it affects, meanwhile with TDE. Now that for all intents and purposes, the main part of the battle is over. They want to go about their careers and continue their lives, and in all honesty, I think Drake needs to listen to an album like Hugh's Blue Lips instead of just posting up in a picture of Blue Slides to troll him. Which, if you didn't know, is the third song on the Blue Lips album and serves as the thematic centerpiece of the entire project. He probably should have tried to get a ticket to his show instead of canceling it, because he wouldn't just see what it's like to make a good album at this point in your career that manages to be extremely well written and produced. But maybe then Drake would understand that he might need to start growing up a little and begin to really step up into being the man that he has been called out for not being. But as I genuinely don't believe he can. I don't. I think he's too far gone. So far gone. But, yeah, I don't think he can. Nah. Nah. That, he has that homelander mentality. I think he's truly just a narcissist, man. You feel me? I truly believe that. Like, that's the reason why he keeps calling himself the boy. He's a boy. He's a boy. Like, bro, he has the mind of a child. He just, he's wearing the uniform of a grown man. But you can tell with his mannerisms, he's still in the same energy, the vibration, the frequency of a child. Like, he has this exact same thought process. And it's like, it's, ex it's so obvious for everybody else but him. It's crazy, man. Stance. Drake is just going further into his own world of delusion. And beyond just his own thoughts, he is now making his city follow in his footsteps, whether you agree with him or not. So with all of that said, let me know. How do you feel about this situation and what Drake did? And if you want to leave a comment about Schoolboy Q's Blue Lips, please do that as well because I would love to hear what your favorite tracks and parts of that record are because it is genuinely amazing. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. And if you want to see why Drake said he was giving up on rap right before this happened, check out the suggested video. Hey man, shout out to Fantastic Hip Hop for another dope ass video man comment down below what y'all want to see next man see you on the next one